You may already know that white light is made up of many different colors. That's where rainbows come from. A rainbow just shows you all the colors hidden in white sunlight. Those colors were there all along, but you can't see them when they're combined. That's because when your eyes detect light, they only tell you part of the story. By using an instrument to create our own artificial rainbows, we can learn a lot more about light. These instruments are called spectroscopes because the rainbow they form is known as a spectrum. There are a lot of different ways to split light up into a spectrum. These include drops of water in a cloud, a glass prism, and something called a diffraction grating. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make a very simple but powerful spectroscope using a diffraction grating and folded paper. Before you build your spectroscope, let's talk about how light and color work. Light is made up of waves, and just like waves in the ocean, these waves come in different sizes. The distance between one wave and the next is called wavelength. When you look at a rainbow, the longest wavelengths are red, and the shortest wavelengths are violet. Even though you can't always tell by looking at them, different light sources are made of different combinations of colors. With a spectroscope, you can split that one source into the different wavelengths of light that it is composed of. Here's a video of the exact same armband seen through our spectroscope. First you can see that it has red, green, and blue lights in it. But the interesting part is when we switch it to yellow. Then you can see that the yellow light is actually made up of red and green combined. Similarly, the cyan light is made up of blue and green, and the purple light is made up of red and blue. Finally, the white light is made of all three colors combined. By combining red, green, and blue light, you can make almost any color in the rainbow. That's why red, green, and blue are called primary colors. One of the most amazing uses of a spectroscope is identifying what something is made of. It turns out that different elements have their own light signature, like a unique fingerprint. This fingerprint depends on the arrangement of electrons in the atom. Atoms have electrons that orbit around a nucleus, and these electrons have energy levels that depend on how far away from the nucleus they orbit. Let's look at what scientists call the Bohr model of the atom. This isn't what the atom actually looks like, but it's an easier way to conceptualize what goes on inside. An electron can change its orbit by absorbing energy. A very common way for that to happen is through photons, which are particles of light. Let's compare what happens when two photons with different energy levels are absorbed by an electron. Here is an electron in its usual orbit. First, let's start with a red photon, which has a lower energy and a longer wavelength. When the electron absorbs the photon's energy, it jumps up to a higher state. In order to get back to its stable state, it must emit another photon. We can see what happens with a violet photon as well. The process is the same, but as you can see, the electron jumps higher because the violet photon has more energy and a shorter wavelength. We can see that different photons have different energy levels by shining lasers of different colors on a glow-in-the-dark sticker. When the green light is shined on the sticker, we do not see the sticker glow. However, if we use a violet laser which has a shorter wavelength and higher energy, the sticker glows. This glow is called phosphorescence. Let's look at phosphorescence through the spectroscope. The spectrum is shown on the left in this video. The bright violet line represents the wavelength of the violet laser, and the rainbow is the phosphorescence created by the electrons returning from their excited state. All the wavelengths in the rainbow are longer than the violet laser, because the electron loses some energy in the jump. So here are all the parts for the spectroscope you're going to be making. They come in a sheet, and uh, you tear them all out, and this is what you're left with. Here is an eyepiece. This is the diffraction grating. Um, then you have a spacer, a gap edge, another spacer, a scale, and a scale cover, and the sheet for the body of the spectroscope. You'll also need some tape and a ruler for folding. Once you're done, this is what your spectroscope will look like. Here's the eyepiece that you look through, and on the other end is a slit that light comes in through. While you're building the spectroscope, make sure to be careful not to touch the surface of the diffraction grating because you'll get oils on it or damage it. Start folding your spectroscope with the black side up. Crease along each of these gray lines using the ruler. Now fold the body like this, making sure to put flap B over flap A.
Line up the edges and then tape them. Next, we'll form this side of the spectroscope where the scale will go. Fold flap C down over flap D. Then hold the spectroscope aligned carefully while you tape these edges and these corners. Now let's move on to this hole next to the side we were just working on. This is where the slit will go. Start by folding down these tabs on three sides, then fold flap C over them. Tape over the corners and these outside edges. Now we'll create the entrance slit. Use two spacers stacked on top of each other to set its width. Once you have it set at the right width and parallel, tape it down. Next, we'll turn the spectroscope over and work on the eyepiece. Fold the flaps down on the edges and tape over the corners. Now, place the diffraction grating and eyepiece so that the labels match the label on the spectroscope, and tape them in place. Now we're almost done. We need to place the scale on our spectroscope, and then calibrate it. First, make sure that the 3000 angstrom line is on the side towards the slit. In order to calibrate the scale, you need to point the spectroscope at a fluorescent light. This is what it will look like. Line up the green emission line with the dotted line on your scale. When you have finished this, tape the scale securely. You have now calibrated your spectroscope. You can tape the scale cover over your scale, but it's easier to read the scale if you leave it off. That's it! Here are some cool examples of spectra you can see from different neon signs. Can you figure out which element they are using your spectroscope? Thanks for watching our video. We hope you learned a little more about light and its cool properties. Mm -hmm.